conventional approach of protecting heritage sites as largely tourism driven. Personally, I would again like to caution that that alone should not be the key objective. If the if I would look at it as uh, four words which all start with P, the first most important thing is to preserve. Whether or not tourists come there, but we must preserve what we have. And along with that, protect it also. Preservation without protection. Uh, and I think this was mentioned, or sometimes local communities may not be aware of the treasure that they have. So protection is extremely important. And then we go to promote and propagate and let people enjoy these, uh, these valuable sites, learn about their history, uh, learn about the heritage, and they have a certain kind of inspirational and spiritual fulfillment. So when we uh, look at from these objectives of preservation, then the first thing in our mind is not infrastructure development. It's uh, how to resurrect and protect the asset. And for that, uh, we need very specialized people. I would like to underscore that once again. In normal project mode, we are all obliged to go out in the market, look for consultants, and uh, those consultants come up with certain concepts and ideas, and then uh, the project implements those. So our consulting industry certainly is not uh, capable of looking at such works. So that's something that is given. We know that. Uh, so how do we get this expertise? And my first request to our partners would be to harness this expertise for us. People can come spend time and guide on what needs to be done at these sites and uh, help us design a program for them. Because we will not be able to procure this, this expertise through our governmental procurement processes. So, uh, your funding, which is very valuable, could also help us get the specialists and the experts. That's point uh, number one. Number two is that once we know what needs to be done, then how to do it is again a challenge in the normal project model. Because we go out, you prepare the bills of quantities, and then you issue a tender, and the tender goes to somebody who's giving you the best bid. And that might not necessarily be the best way of doing it. And we've seen that that these uh, specialized works require a different kind of public procurement and treatment. And there are uh, clauses available in the procurement uh, rules which allow for that. But there might be a certain hesitation to invoke those because uh, it might uh, not sit very well with uh, the order and it's such kind of uh, requirements. So if we can channelize these funds through specialized agencies which have the ability to actually conduct these works with the sensitivity, with the uh, deference, with the care that this kind of work requires. That's my second uh, important Infrastructure development, of course, is required. Uh, access, most of all, and then letting people enjoy these with some kind of basic comforts that they require. But those designs and those works must not be alien to that environment. Mm -hmm. That's extremely important. Because it then creates a, a, a patchwork on something which is very valuable and that might not be a fair thing to do. So the infrastructure development has to be very uh, carefully planned. 
The next is how to involve the local communities. And we know that from our experience that communities get involved and they benefit from what happens around these sites. And this can recognize the economic importance, uh, the heritage importance of course is there and that awareness needs to be built. But the economic importance and these then become opportunities of livelihoods. And that kind of work is also absolutely imperative so that uh, the long-term sustainability and ownership of these sites are as, as with the locals who actually are the real owners of the site. We would like to thank the Chinese Embassy for their offer on training opportunities. I think that uh, would be a great step and also on equipment and technology. Uh, but for both these, I would also request them to give us uh, some expertise which can tell us what kind of training, what kind of uh, equipment and technology could be helpful. Of course, we will make that request to the formal channel request the government of heaven so far to uh, move, move through the economic affairs division and we'll uh, pursue it with, with, at all levels. If our approvals are required, we'll certainly get those approvals. But we'd like to enhance our request to, for you to look at this also from the perspective of providing the expertise and the knowledge and technical support in the work being done. Also very grateful to the South uh, Korean Embassy for the work that they are already doing and uh, the plan that they have for uh, 2 million US dollars. Again, our request to you would also be to bring in the expertise and the uh, consultants or specialized people who could actually guide this, this money is very valuable, uh, but we will not be able to access your expertise unless uh, it is provided by your uh, country. And uh, South Korea has been a great support for Pakistan in this. We've uh, spoken about uh, some of the things which were mentioned in the concept note as well, the virtual tours, of course. We must open all this to the world, and technology permits that. Once again, uh, it has to be done in a manner that becomes a very worthwhile experience. And while we may have technical uh, capacities in the country, but to make it more exciting for the international market, we need to understand the market. Who would actually assist these uh, virtual tours? Who are the clients? Would they be universities, would they be research organizations, would they be uh, museums around the globe who would encourage people to, to see these virtual tours, or do we just leave it to chance? Whoever by chance hits uh, on these sites would be able to see. But I think we, we need to put up a marketing exercise so that this work, these virtual tours which could be developed for an international audience, also national audience, but for the international audience, so that people can at least have a look at what is available in this part of the world. I'm very glad that uh, there's been work being done on the coffee table book, and of course, once again, uh, the quality of the photography, and this is again very sensitive area. Uh, perhaps very specialized people would be able to understand how to capture uh, this kind of asset and photography. And uh, again, I would encourage you, our friends from China, from South Korea, from other, from Italy, uh, to be able to help us with uh, finding the best way of capturing this in photography. I'd like to acknowledge and thank uh, the government of Italy for the work that they're doing already. I'm very pleased to hear that the ambassador is uh, planning this kind of event towards the end of the year. 
Italy has been a very sturdy partner in this work with us and uh, we'd also request them more for expertise and uh, collaborations on this account. I'd like to see some kind of research grants for scholars who would like to investigate and inquire into these sites, to bring out the stories to bring it out and get them published. So we need to be able to fund such efforts. And these grants should be available to anybody internationally who would like to study the significance of these sites. There's a need to have the academia involved into this. Perhaps the Maybe it's already there, but perhaps the university, whichever the government of Hyperpotomka prefers, should have chairs which are specialized and dedicated to this work. Uh, you know, probably there could be a chair for the Gandhara and Gandhara civilization, but also particular chairs for uh, specific areas that they might have in mind. The marketing of this needs to be uh, done through some specialized people who understand the marketing of heritage. We all as individuals perhaps have ideas and we can give some very good inputs. I think a proper marketing plan developed by uh, professionals would be very helpful. Take this out to the larger audience. I think the World Bank uh, is already doing very, very good work on this. Um, as I mentioned, we were part of a design of a project which started in Punjab initially from Sikh uh, tourism, also extended to Buddhist tourism. Um, and now they are working uh, with Hyber Pratukha. So we would like to see how we can all get together, uh, create a platform, so that we regularly interact and can discuss this and see how we can complement each other. Very keen to get other provinces also involved uh, and leverage this uh, platform for their support. Uh, but we'd like to be fully focused in the beginning so that we have very clear targets and as we move forward then we engage uh, all the provinces, Gilgit Pakistan was mentioned as huge heritage uh, sites again Sindh has a very rich history and some very valuable work is done by the Prussian government but also by Pakistan, Punjab as I mentioned is Engage both with the uh, Han Cultural Services as well as with the uh, World Bank. And more lately, uh, the project was approved for the government of Punjab, which has been funded by the French Agency for Development. And I think for that, also, the uh, Han Cultural Services would act as the, uh, the implementation partner. So that kind of uh, arrangement in which uh, rather than going through the regular contracting mode and procurements, if we can afford these partnerships, I think uh, we'll be much better off. So thank you very much. I think this is very useful. So what we do is we uh, try to notify uh, an advisory committee for this protection and promotion of heritage. And we will continue this dialogue. I think next time people can go back and see what additional um, perspectives and support they can bring to this table. And the government of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa is going to be in the driving seat. We all are here to support and assist them. But in the next session, we'll be, we'll be a little more focused on uh, the work to be done and uh, work to develop a roadmap of sorts and see how we can then also invite the provinces to join this work. I'd like to thank everybody for being here this morning.